Goldilocks and the Three Bears is a story about a narcissistic, entitled child who broke in and robbed and vandalized the house of three innocent bears. But as much as I dislike spoiled children, and there seems to be a never-ending parade of them these days, it does bring up an important question. What size of adventure motorcycle is just right? And lo and behold, few folks are more qualified to make a video on this subject than I am. You see, in the last couple of years, I've owned one of each. There was the Papa Bear sized Moto Guzzi Stelvio 1200 NTX, a big 600 plus pound heavyweight touring ADV bike with a 32 liter fuel tank. There is the Mama Bear bike I traded the Moto Guzzi for, the 452 pound mid sized Yamaha Tenere 700. And now there's the baby bear size Honda CRF 300L Rally, which we bought from my wife Brooke, which tips the scales at a mere 337 pounds. This is the lightest and most off-road capable adventure motorcycle currently on sale in Canada. I've put a lot of time on each of these motorcycles in all sorts of situations, from highway cruising to straight two lanes, twisty pavement, gravel, dirt, double track, ATV trails, and deep sand and single track. Although one of them I didn't run on the gnarly stuff. Guess which one I didn't take on the single track. Those ownership experiences have given me the insights needed to discuss the pluses and minuses of each sized bike. So settle in and enjoy. And if you feel so inclined, help out the channel by hitting the subscribe button, liking the vid and following us elsewhere. Alright, let's discuss if size matters. Adventure bikes are popular not only because they are incredibly capable, but because they sell a dream. Marketing 101. Don't sell the product, sell the lifestyle. In this case, the long way around lifestyle. Pack up your bike, head for the horizon, and don't let the lack of pavement stop you. Camp in the bush or somewhere in the desert, under the stars with the howl of coyotes, or whatever animals grace your part of the world. Traverse mountains, rivers, jungles, and deserts. Yep, that sells a lot of bikes. But the truth is that the vast majority of adventure bikes don't ever see a trail and barely see any gravel. And there's nothing wrong with that. These bikes are brilliant on pavement, comfortable, have plenty of room for luggage, afford their riders a commanding view from their high perch, and offer all the modern tech. Their off-road capability is sort of a bonus, and there are those adventure riders who use it, but I suspect that these people are in the minority. And like the three bears, these bikes come in three major sizes. At the top we have the 11 to 1300 cc group of bikes. They range in weight from 530 to 600 pounds, horsepower from 100 to 170, and prices from check out my Beamer to check out the hedge fund I'm running. In the middle are the Mama Bear sized bikes, weighing between 450 and 500 pounds, packing between 70 and 100 horsepower, uh, except for the KLR, and priced from expensive to reasonable to holy crap. And then we have the smaller ADV bikes, most of which weigh under 400 pounds, range in horsepower from about 24 to 45 and are priced very reasonably indeed. So if you have the money, just plop it down on a big one, right? Not so fast. The big beasts are brilliant. On the road. Enough power to race that Ferrari that pulls up and revs its engine at you. Enough high tech for a mission to Mars. These bikes are the most comfortable on the highway, the most thrilling when you whack open the throttle, and an absolute hoot on a twisty road, which is why they need the tech. You can't send out a bunch of mere mortals on 150 plus horsepower bikes and give them that horsepower without some electronic taming. Lean sensitive ABS and multi-level traction control, electronic suspension automatically adjusting to various conditions, wheelie control, even seat height adjustability as the bike slows down. And you need all of that so the riders of these bikes don't kill themselves. But man, does it all work together well. Awesome road bikes, sport tours, can even tackle a gravel or dirt road. Where they don't work so well is on more technical off-road. Yes, you see these bikes doing amazing things in the promo videos, ridden by... not you. These bikes rip around off-road in the commercials, piloted by professional riders, and these commercials make you dream. But dreaming is all it is. When a regular Joe takes these down the trail, the experience is terrifying. It is the feeling that an unstoppable object is barreling into trouble. The main issues are weight and power. These bikes are not nimble, don't change directions well, are easy to drop, hard to pick up, and are not tolerant of whiskey throttle. One small misstep could cost you some broken bones and very expensive motorcycle parts. 
Can it be done? Yes. Is it fun? No. Keep these bikes where they belong, on the pavement with very occasional excursions onto gravel or a tiny bit of dirt. On the other end of the spectrum are the smaller bikes, and these are the best adventure bikes off-road. Light, easy to maneuver, and if necessary, pick up. They are forgiving of mistakes and the least intimidating. I took my wife on her first off-road excursion on the new CRF 300L rally, and she did shockingly well considering she had never ridden on dirt. This bike can still her with confidence, and me too by the way. When I'm heading to the trail, I'll take her rally more often than I'll take my mid-sized Tenere 700. The tighter and more technical the riding, the greater the difference. On single track, where my Tenere struggles and makes me sweat profusely, the rally is fun, confidence-inspiring and much, much faster. In fact, it's the only adventure bike I've owned that is fun on single track. The Tenere is hard work. Ooh, shit. Ooh. Man, okay, Bark Buster saves the day. So beginners to off-roading need a small bike to build and improve their skills. If you start on a big or medium-sized bike and try to learn off-roading, you may never get good. It won't be fun because the weight will be too much, the horsepower will leave very little margin for error, and you'll be working hard and feeling a lot of anxiety instead of building confidence. So small bikes are great for beginners and smaller riders, but are also more fun and capable off-road when ridden by experienced riders. If I had to choose a bike to ride around the world solo, I'd choose the CRF 300L Rally, simply because not all places around the world have good roads or any roads at all. Road of bones? I'm not bringing a big GS, no way, no how. So why not just ride small adventure bikes? Well, where the big bikes excel, these bikes falter. On the road, some of them are underpowered, though some of them aren't. Two up, they're not great, and while their lightweight is an advantage off-road, it's a detriment on the highway where crosswinds and turbulence from trucks bat these smaller motorcycles about. Still, if you want to save money and still have a lot of fun adventuring, these baby bear motorcycles are all you need. So is there a size that is just right? Well, the majority of riders these days seem to think it's the middleweight adventure motorcycles, the 650 to 900 cc bikes. My own Yamaha Tenere 700 is quickly becoming a future classic, and other bikes in this category are generally seen as having the perfect blend of power, carrying capacity, lower weight, and off-road ability. They're capable of two-up riding and long-distance highway touring, some of them have the modern tech of the bigger bikes, they're plenty powerful, and some are surprisingly capable off-road. But, if you think you can take your mid-sized adventure bike off-road and keep up with your buddies on their enduros, think again. My Tenere is awesomely capable off-road, for a 450-pound motorcycle. Everything is relative. I've taken it on the trails with much lighter bikes and it will do the job, but much slower and with far more stress than the bikes I was riding with, especially on the tight stuff. The middleweights are jacks of all trades, but not the best at any of them. Good on and off-road, but just good, not great. So what to take away from my experience with all three sizes? If you're going to keep it mostly on pavement and do some long distance touring, if you're an advanced rider and are addicted to big power, if you do a lot of two-up riding, then get a big ADV motorcycle. If, on the other hand, you are going to have one motorcycle that performs a wide variety of functions and can tour across the continent and then tackle some trails, then the middleweight bikes are your best bet. If you're a beginner or a beginner off-road and you want to have the maximum confidence, or most of your riding is off-road, or if you have a limited budget for your motorcycling hobby, the small bikes really are amazing. As with everything, which ADV motorcycle is your Goldilocks bike depends on the riding you do. All of these bikes are awesome and do well in different situations. Personally, if I'm riding my local trails or doing a long tour mostly on trails, I'm taking a small bike. If I can only have one and will use it for all of my riding, Tenere 700 all the way. If I'm going to the Arctic Circle on pavement and gravel, I'll take a 1250 GSA with awesome weather protection, accessory outlets for my heated gear and shaft drive that I don't have to keep cleaning. But remember, just because you can afford a motorcycle doesn't mean you should buy it. The KTM 1290 Super Adventure R is an awesome bike and it is tremendously fun to ride. 
but if that was the only bike I ever took off-road, my skills would never have developed because I'd be too terrified to take it there. If you're unsure about whether you can handle a particular bike, don't be afraid to buy something smaller until you level up your skills. You are not that rider in the commercial and you never will be if you get a motorcycle that scares you. Get the bike that complements your skills and riding style. I hope that was helpful. In the near future, I'll put out a direct comparison between my Tenere and Brooks Rally, including side-by-side -side comparisons of the two bikes on the same roads and trails. I've been asked about this topic and I'll take my time to make that video as comprehensive as it can be. Thanks for watching, enjoy your riding, and I'll see you in the next video. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up, and may the spokes be with you.